Hi, and welcome back to the channel and this new series of videos that I'm doing uh, where I'm going to show you how to design your own um, garden room using the free version of um, SketchUp. Um, Google SketchUp, it's no longer Google SketchUp. It's been taken over by a company called Trimble, but Google SketchUp used to be uh, an application you could download onto your computer and use it for free, and it was really, really good. Now, obviously you have to pay for it, but they have uh, a free version which you can use online. So that works out really, really fine, and you can save everything you need to. You just have to create an account, but we'll, we'll go through that in a minute. So I suppose the reason for these videos is if any of you have been watching um, the Ultimate Man Cave build, quite a lot of thought goes into the work that I'm doing on those. And that happens in here, in the dry, um, where I can sit down, can work out the sizes, I can lay it out, I can look at different elements of design detail without having to just hold bits of wood up and try and work it out on site, which is a pain to be honest. So this is a really useful tool and it's not too complicated, but there is definitely a process of doing it, which I'm gonna try and show you. So hopefully, we're going to start off with a really simple um, three by three garden room and from that point you can then adjust um, your measurements or your design for your measurements um, but all of the things that we do will be applicable whether your garden room is 10 foot long or two foot long. Just jump straight in and get on with it, shall we? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the SketchUp website. So if you just Google SketchUp, then it comes up and it's just the SketchUp for free that you want to use. And then we can just jump straight down into start modeling. Now, I'm already logged in, and if you have to set up an account, just go ahead and set up an account. It's, it's really easy, and once you do, then you'll come to something like this. And I've got a few little designs on here that I've been playing around with, but we just click on create new and then we select millimeters, simple template millimeters. That way um, we're all working in, in metric. I guess if anyone's watching this from a country where you work in feet and inches, that's probably what you want to use, but I'm going to stick with millimeters because I'm in the UK. So once you click on that, then you come into the 3D, um, world it's probably not called a world it's like an art board in some ways now this woman here is to give you an idea of scale but we don't want her so you can just click on her and then push the delete key and you get rid of it okay so we've got a variety of tools down the left hand side and also options down the right hand side so i'm not going to go through each one of these with you right now we're going to just go through and we'll use the tools as we need to one by one but what i would say is that you're always having to sort of click and change and it's very easy to get ahead of yourself before you've you've created anything and you've got like items get stuck together so just one step at a time so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go down to the tape measure tool and if you click on that, then there is a tape measure tool here. And that's the one we're going to want to use to start with. So as you can see, your icon's turned into a tape measure. And here you have your horizontal or your depth and your length accesses and your height. So we're going to start on the red one. And you don't want to be in the corner. You want to just be somewhere along the red line. And you're going to click and then drag it back. 
Now, as you can see, there's a green line and that means we are dragging along the green axis. If we move the cursor up here, we can over here, we can get it to drag up the blue axis, but we're gonna kind of mark out the base first. So we're gonna drag it. Now, what you do is you can unclick and then just type in 3000, which is millimeters, and that you'll see that that number pops up down here. 3000, click return. That has then put this mark in exactly the right position at three meters from this. So as we're making a square, we're gonna do the same thing again. Um, and we're gonna click on there, drag, and it's red this time, because we're dragging along the red, the red axis. So then we're gonna type in 3000, because we've got a three meter by three meter uh, garden room that we're making. So this is like basically the start of your building and these just give us the perimeter of the building so it makes it nice and easy for us to work on. Okay, so now we have the outline of our building, what we're going to do is we need to create the structure of the base. We're going to start with the structure first, then we're going to do the foundations and then we'll start working our way up. Now the structure is going to be made out of um, six for two timber, but in the UK that's actually forty five mil by one hundred and forty five mil. So we're going to come down. We're going to zoom in. You can zoom in using you know your the wheel. On. So what we're going to do, and this is why the the tape measure tool is so useful because we've got to create that piece of wood and we're going to create it in exactly the same size that it would be. So from the blue line, somewhere up here, not the corner, we're going to drag along on the red axis and we're going to type in 45. Okay, And that gives us the width of our bit of timber. And then from the red axis, if we drag up, making sure we're dragging on the blue line so you can see a blue line if you come over here it'd be green if you go there it's green and there you can't see it but it's red so up here is blue and we're going to type in one four five because that is the size of our timber so this shape here is then the profile of our timber so we can come down to the shape side the shapes which is uh, here this button here with the, the rectangle and you've got multiple different shapes but we're going to be using the rectangle and then you can hover on the corners and it will kind of grip but it sort of snaps to point and you click on it and drag down now you can see it wants to do like a blue like a, a horizontal line but if you drag it down to this corner it will create the, the shape in the right plane that we want now, this is one of my favourite tools in SketchUp. This is like the push-pull tool. So if you click on that and then you click on the top version, you can get the end of this and you can push it. You know, you can, so you can push it and pull it and you, you're instantly making it a three-dimensional shape. So if you start pushing it away from you to the back of your, your, your work, um, your, your garden room, then you can do exactly the same. You can let go of the cursor and type 3000 and there you have your first um, piece of timber um, the desired length of your office obviously here it's three meters or 3000 millimeters but you know you could do that as long as you want so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go on here and click the select tool and we are going to double click, or maybe even triple click, the um, the item, the piece of wood, until you can see all the dots and all the lines. And that means like the whole thing is selected. Um, and then we come up to the paint bucket tool and to paint bucket. Now, we've got a couple of things here. You if you've got like the home colors which are just you know standard colors or if you click on um, 
the browser icon, then you get uh, a real mixture of of metals and glass and vegetation. But there's at the bottom there, there's wood, and if you click on that, then you get a few options. And I just normally try and pick something that will make it look a bit woody. And then once you've selected it down here, you just bring up here and you just click on it and you've now got a piece of timber that looks like a piece of timber. Obviously, you feel free to pick any of these that, that, that you want. Now, if we double click on it again so that everything is selected and then right click, what we can do is you come down and you make this a group now basically what that means is as we get more of these because we'll duplicate these they don't merge if, if you don't create groups then items merge um, which means then if I select this one like this I can move this around and it won't blend into any other shapes if you are doing this and um, you create one and then when we duplicate it um, two items become one it means you've not grouped them um, and, and that's it, it gets really complicated then because it's really difficult to un, sort of uncombine items if you like so what we'll do with this selected We'll click on this button down here. This is the move tool, and we'll just use the one with the four arrows in all directions. Now you can um, hover over the corners, and it'll give you like sort of the places to link to. But because we are coming, if you zoom out a little bit, we're going to come over to this point. We're going to use the closest corner. So if you click on that and push the Alt key. On your keyboard that makes a copy and it, I mean you move it around wherever you want but if you kind of keep it in line with with the red axis then you can bring it all over and it will where you've created the ruler here it will automatically lock onto there and basically you've now got two sides of your base um, a tool that's really helpful is is down here is the orbit tool. Now you've got two tools in here that I use a lot. One is the orbit actual orbit tool, and if you click on it and then drag, you can spin round the model. Which sometimes when you're um, changing the way you're working, so we've done that one, and we're going to come across here now. So. I sort of come around here and it makes it a little bit easier to drag things along and then the other one is the hand tool and that just if you, things are getting a bit out of line you can click on it and drag drag the screen around okay so we with this one selected we're going to go to the move tool but we're going to click on the rotate button this time and what we want to do is we want to rotate this piece of timber well actually what we want to do is we want to make a copy of that first so we're going to go back down to the move tool and click the arrows then we're just going to click on the corner and make a, a copy so that's all great and then we're going to go back to the move tool and click on the the rotate tool now Again, with everything on SketchUp, if you've got a blue arrow, it means you're a blue circle, it means you're going to rotate it in one axis, and if you've got a red one, it means you're going to rotate it on another axis. So, on this one, we're actually looking for um, a blue axis. So, once you've got it, you can click and you can kind of turn this wheel around, and it won't turn. The thing around at the moment but we want to turn it 90 degrees so we're just going to come round and it will again lock onto the axis that you're working on and then you click again and then it will spin round now don't worry about its position at the moment and just click off 
to then have that done. Now you don't have to, the next stage is go back to the, the move tools and click on the arrows. Now if you come down here and grab this far corner and click it, you can drag this up and we'll be able to put it over here. Now again, this is going to be a bit long because we have three meters by three meters and we've already added 45 mil this way and 45 mil that way. But I'm going to use the orbit tool just to spin round to this corner and zoom in a little bit. And then back to the move tool. So yeah, I'm going to grab this corner and I can bring it up and it will just, once I'm, if I put the cursor on this corner, it automatically jumps into position and then zoom out and we're, we're good to go. And then again, use the orbit tool to bring round to this end. And then we're gonna go to, um, hang on, I'm not sure where they've put it in this one. Scale tool. Okay, so from this area, what we need to do now is make this piece of timber a little bit smaller so that this point will marry up with that point. So in the move tools, again, you have the scale option. And if you click on that and then click on the piece of timber, you have all of these, these dots or these points. Now, if you drag a corner point, it will scale the whole thing down and all we want to do is make it shorter. So we're going to use this middle point and we just get that and we drag it until it kind of locks into point there. You can drag it through and you can drag it past, but if you kind of put your cursor on the line where you want it to go, it will just drag and then you can drop it. Again, use the orbit tool to kind of have a look zoom out a little bit and there is our first one now it gets a little bit more straightforward because we've got what we need now a sheet of plywood is is 1.2 to the middle okay so we're going to use the um, So we're gonna use the tape measure tool and we need to mark from here, click on there and drag along the green axis and I'm gonna type in uh, 1200, which takes us to there. So the width of a sheet of, plaster, uh, of plywood, sorry, will be this big, but so this line here will be the middle of a full sheet. Oh, uh, sorry. This line here will be the middle of uh, a, a, a floor joist. So what we're going to do is on this, we know that a floor joist is 45 mil wide. So that's 22 and a half. So we're going to click on that and drag it one way and put 22.5 in. And I'm going to do it the other way, making sure I've got my green arrow to 2.5. So what that means now is I don't need that middle mark, so I can click on it and just delete it. And this line here will give me um, where I want that rafter or that joist to go, sorry, that joist to go, so that when I lay a sheet of plywood down, it will fall right on the middle and then we can lay that out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go back to the move tool, which is now changed to the scale tool. Click on the piece that I want. Oh, sorry, it's not selected. I want the arrows. And then I can just use my Alt key again to make a copy and I can drag that and it will, and I'll hold it in place and that will lock it. 
Now, next thing to do is basically from here, you want 400 centers to pick up your flooring. So we can click on that, use the Alt key, drag it along the axis, and then just type 400. And that will put it in the right place. And then we can do that again, 400. And we've got some perfectly spaced floor joists. So all that remains to happen now is to carry that on. Now, what we don't need to do is worry about the center now, because as long as these all stay 400 mil away from each other, it will line up with a sheet of plywood, whether you lay it widthways or lengthways. So again, we can just click on this. Uh, sorry, let me select it first. This is what I mean, like if you don't select the thing you want, you end up moving other things. So you've got to be a bit careful of that. Uh, the move tool, and then from there, we're going to use the Alt key, drag to the right, uh, 400. There's the next one. And again, 400. Oh, that's jumped out of place, you see. So what I can do is I can just undo that using Command Z or Control Z, depending on whether you're using a Mac or a PC. So then keeping it on that axis where you've got the green line, 400. And again, 400. And again, 400. Now the last one isn't going to be 400 because we're working in three meters. So I'm just going to use the rotate tool just a little bit just to sort of get me into this area. And then again, back to the move tool. And I'm going to grab the corner of this one using the Alt key and that will just drop that into place. So as you can see, we've basically got the beginning of our of our base and from this place you can go all the way around it you can see how much easier this is going to make it now obviously there's going to be some noggins so if you've been watching my video you would have seen me put noggins in now i'm not going to stagger them on this drawing as i would in real life but what i will do is i will use the tape measure tool to basically do exactly the same thing that I did, the sheet of plasterboard will, uh, of the sheet of plywood will lie flush with this edge. So I'm going to drag a rule along here, making sure I've got the red arrow with it, because otherwise you're going diagonally, like that would be diagonally. So get the red line and then type one two zero zero, and that gives us the halfway point. So now I have to drag a little one back, which is 22.5 and again the other way, but get the red line there, 22.5. And then I can delete the middle line. So for this, we're gonna click on this one and it'll be quite straightforward just to drag it. Um, we can just control all, I mean alt and drag and drop it into that space that we've created with the lines. And then again from there, because we know that's correct, we can drag that along and type two, uh, 1200, 1200 and click it in. We don't necessarily need to make these shorter because I think you'll, you'll agree that that demonstrates where the noggins have to go. So basically we have our base and that is the first thing you need to know to create your garden room. So from here you can start counting your materials as so you need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 lengths of six per two and you'll be able to get those in uh, 3.2 meter lengths which 
will mean there's a little bit left over but then you can use those later on in for the build and if you're watching my build series you'll see what I do with those to create stops to hold um, the insulation in the floor okay so that's it for this video um, next time we will be looking at the foundations and where they're gonna go but that's a really good start and if you have any problems let me know and see you next time peace